Hi everybody. Welcome to the 11th day of our circuit breaker lockdown. And well, you know, is that the 10th, 12th? Okay, I've lost count, frankly, because every day is starting to feel like the same, right? You know, doing the same thing in the same place. Maybe you're going through this also, but you know what? God is always good. He's good all the time and His grace will be sufficient to see you and me through this storm together. Amen. Now, Thank you for having me, you know, in your house, in your earphones at least, and you joining me here for a couple of minutes today. And we're going to be talking about something a little bit different, but also very important in my estimate, right? So we are in for a very long, trying and rough ride, economically speaking. I've seen reports that say that this is going to be a minus 6% GDP year uh, with 100 to 200,000 uh, retrenchments and to give you some scale that's like six seven times more than uh, what we saw during the period of SARS and earlier recessions so this is going to be very bad this lockdown that we're in is very likely to be extended by two weeks maybe more right depending on how the situation goes but this lockdown is not the end it is just the beginning because it will precipitate an economic recession that's going to be more prolonged it's going to last a year or maybe two years before we finally recover and get out of it. And the reason I'm telling you this is not to scare you, but because I want you to be mentally, spiritually, emotionally prepared to take on this challenge, right? We cannot run away from it. It's coming, but we can be prepared uh, spiritually in our hearts. We can be prepared mentally and uh, even emotionally for it. Very important. So that when this thing finally clears, when the smoke clears, you and I will be found standing faithful, firmly in the Lord. This is what we are hoping and praying for. Now, because of this economic hardship that's coming, you know, there's going to be people who find themselves in some very desperate financial situations. And uh, in our despair, in our financial despair, we are sometimes presented with uh, all kinds of different temptations. For instance, I'm getting on my phone, you know, some random messages on WhatsApp or SMS from people I don't know offering me loans, easily obtained and approved loans. Now, if you didn't know, these would be loan sharks, right? So don't even bother looking at those things. Don't consider those loans, delete them and put them aside. Don't go for the loan sharks. On the other hand, you're also getting some more legitimate looking emails from banks offering you credit cards. Now, those can be tempting. I admit, credit cards have their uses. They can be convenient as a form of payment. But in all my years as a pastor, I've seen firsthand the, the pain and the grief that credit card can inflict on individuals and on their families. So, you know, this is what I want to talk to you a little bit because I want to help you avoid a very specific kind of hell on earth, what I'll call credit card hell. Now, I want to say in no uncertain terms that credit card is not free money. As if that needs to be said, right? But I'm saying it anyway. Credit card is not free money, even though they make it look like it. You know, they glamorize it, but it is not, right? And sometimes when you are in times of trouble, you're thinking, okay, maybe I'll just use this credit card. Listen, the worst time to use the credit card is when you are in times of trouble. Many people actually don't understand how this credit card uh, system really works. Obviously, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And if the bank was not going to earn some money from you, they're not going to be lending you money, but in the form of credit card, right? So uh, I'm a numbers guy. I'm a bit of a math nerd. So I'm going to give you a couple of quick examples to illustrate what I mean. Okay, so let's say now you have a business expense or a rental that's coming up and you're not able to pay it for whatever reason, right? You're in a jam, your cash flow problems, or you lost your job. And so all of a sudden, you're not able to pay this bill. So you think to yourself, well, I'm going to charge it to the card. I'm going to put it on the card. So you do. Now, the credit card has a 26% annual interest rate in Singapore, more or less, right? Which works out to be about 0.07% a day. Now, the first 21 days is interest-free. This is the honeymoon period. You don't have to pay anything. But from the 22nd day onwards, they're going to bill you, they're going to charge you an interest of 0.07% a day. Now, that sounds very little, but it works out to $3.56 a day. Every day is going to add on to your interest. Like that's maybe half a lunch or half a dinner, right? I guess, depending on what kind of food you eat. But this means that at the end of that first day, 22nd day, you will be owing $5,003.56. If this continues for 30 days after that 22nd day, you will be owing $106.80 uh, worth in interest. So your total owed amount is now $2,000. 
not $5,000, but $5,106.80 after just one month beyond that interest-free period. Now, some people are thinking, well, okay, pastor, I can pay the minimum uh, amount and that should be safe. But this is actually an illusion. The minimum amount is usually around $50 or 3%, whichever is higher. So for $5,000, your minimum amount is $150, which is to say that, you know, even if you pay off this minimum amount, out of that $106 will go off to the interest and you actually reduce your principal only by $43.20. Now suppose, for whatever reason, you're unable to pay that minimum amount. Remember, the reason why you charged it to the card in the first place was because you were desperate, you didn't have uh, cash on hand. So when 21 days is over and you know your billing cycle comes up, you're not able to pay on the due date, you'll be slapped with a penalty of $100. So now on top of 5106, you are actually going to be paying 5206 and 80 cents after just one month if you miss that payment. So you can see this thing builds up really quickly. I've seen people who end up paying thousands of dollars, 3000 4000 5000 dollars a month simply to pay off the interest. They are not even reducing the principal amount. So that is credit card hell. Now there are other people who maybe they think, okay, I'll just take a cash at once because you know I have a cash flow problem and I need this cash really now. Sometimes it's not even a need. You just want to buy something. You just can't wait until your salary uh, comes in. So you you go to the machine, you put in your card, and out comes that amount. Let's say two thousand dollars in cash is what you want. Well, guess what? The moment that cash comes out from that machine you already owe them 6% of your whatever the amount it is, right? In this case, $2,000, you already owe them $120 from the very second the cash comes out from that machine. And then it is 28% a year, which is something like $1.54 a day. At the end of that one month, you'll be owing $2,166, right? For nothing, for taking that cash out of the machine a little bit earlier, $166. And of course, if you fail to pay, that will be another $100, $2,266. So let's quickly go through this, right? What are the lessons we can learn from this? First, don't spend money that you don't have, right? There's a temptation to do that, to borrow from our future, but don't do that because you do not know what the future holds for you. You might lose a job. You know, someone who owes you money may turn up unable to uh, pay you. They might default on you. They might run, you know, I mean, all kinds of problems. You don't know that. So trying to spend money that you don't have, it's a big mistake. It's a massive mistake, right? You're better off denying yourself for a while and make the expense later when you have the cash on hand. Number two, borrowing almost never improves your situation. It's very unlikely to cause your situation to be better down the road, right? So it might give you temporary relief at a long-term cost. And nine out of 10 times, maybe even more than that, it will make your situation far worse than it was at the beginning. So do not fall into this lie that by borrowing, your situation can become better. Actually, it's going to make it worse. You're going to be digging a deeper hole for yourself. Number three, the longer you sit in debt, the stronger it's hold over you, right? Pay the debt immediately and completely, even if it hurts, even if you must, because it makes no sense at all to give money to the bank when you can be using that money for yourself. If you are able to pay the interest, why don't you just use the interest and pay off the loan rather than give the bank this interest? So paying the minimum amount does not protect you from interest. So do everything you can to pay now, don't delay. Okay, number four, don't panic. Talk to somebody who is objective, who is rational, and they can help you think through this because you know when we are faced with this, we are often anxious, we are under uh, pressure, and we are not always thinking very rationally. So get somebody to talk it over with you and help you to think through it with a clear mind. Be objective about it. And then maybe they might help you to see options that you may not have noticed before, that there are ways that you can take that may not completely solve it, but it can certainly reduce your problem, right? So maybe you can find uh, some of these uh, government, you know, they have provided grants and relief funds, and I'll try and put the link down here, www.supportgoware.gov.sg. You know, I mean, there are all kinds of funds you can tap on. Well, that could help you. I'm not sure it will help you completely, but it certainly will uh, alleviate the problem a little bit. Then talk to your family members, right? Some of them may be willing to lend you money uh, interest-free or friends who are willing to help you out interest-free. And that's very important because you don't need to be incurring new charges during this period of time. Now, if you're in church, well, we have a special situation because you know the church is a family, right? It is a family of God. That's why we call each other brothers and sisters. It's not simply because we've forgotten your name, so we call you brother or sister, right? Not, not just for that. But, you know, we, we are doing this because we actually are a family in Christ. 
So in Church of Saviour, okay, this is for Church of Saviour members. Uh, we are putting together a project called Project Jaira, all right, for Jehovah Yireh, which means God sees. So Project Jaira is a little bit of a virtual fund. We are trying to get church members who are able to to put up some amount, any amount could be thirty dollars, fifty dollars, you know, three hundred dollars, seven six hundred dollars that government has given to you, and you're you're not particularly in need of that. Put up some amount and uh, saying that you're prepared to lend this out or give this to somebody who in church who is in need. Now, the reason we do this is because Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, he says, But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I think it's important for us to take care of one another, have each other's back. And when we say love one another, it's not just with the lips, right? We want to put our money where our mouth is. So we have this project. And uh, if you're interested to participate in it, you say, you know, i got some extra money. It doesn't have to be large amounts, not a thousand, two thousand. I mean, that's fine. But, you know, if you say, oh, I've got $50, I'm prepared to lend it. Now, listen, here's the thing. If you're about to put up this money, be prepared that it may not come back, right? It may come back in some cases, but be prepared that, it's as good as giving it away. Now, we, we of course hope that whoever borrows, it, they can give it back or uh, in some cases they cannot, right? But if they can give it back, it goes back in the pool so they can continue to help other people. But for those people who are unable to give it back, we will eventually have to write this off. So basically, um, this is that sort of virtual fund. Now, we're hoping that the money will stay with you until such a time that the need appears. So essentially, we are going to match make you, uh, the lender or the giver, with the need in the church. We have a group of people who are uh, managing this. Some of us may want to give uh, some or money outright and then we have some people to manage the fund and again to direct that to people who are needy. So basically, if you're interested to either be a giver, a donor or a lender in this case, uh, please contact Pastor Charlie. We'll give you more details about this. But if you are someone who is in need, you're in a desperate situation, listen, we got your back, right? The church really loves you. We are taking care of you. So talk to us. We may not be able to solve all your problems, but we certainly will try. And you're not alone. Now, then remember our family credo, F-A-M-I-L-Y, why is you are not alone. And I want you to remember that you are certainly not alone. We don't promise to be able to solve all the problems, but we'll certainly be standing there with you. So if that's you, talk to Pastor Chalip. You should know who Pastor Chalip is. And uh, we pray that, you know, as we go through this very challenging period of time, that we can all help one another uh, to get through this together. So God bless all of you. Remember, you are not